Welcome back guys and as promised in this lesson what we're going to be doing is working a little bit with local storage. So to do that the first thing that I want to do is actually go back to this person struct and talk a little bit about the codable protocol that we implemented on this struct just a minute ago. So in very very basic terms uh, codable was introduced not that long ago. It's actually a really convenient thing that we have access to and what it allows us to do is convert data from a different format other than Swift into Swift. So a couple examples of this would be like a P list or property list file. We can convert the contents of that into Swift. Or another example would be JSON. When we communicate with APIs, they respond to us in a format called JSON. And both of these are completely valid data types, but they're not Swift. But by adding this codable protocol, we are now allowing this data, this Swift data type to be converted from something else into Swift. So it's really, really convenient. And in the case of local storage, in the example that we're using in this module, we are going to be encoding and decoding these objects into property list files, which are going to get stored in local storage. Now, that might sound all overwhelming, but uh, it's actually not nearly as difficult as it sounds. So let's take a look at exactly what this looks like. Let's jump into the view controller. And basically the thing that we're gonna wanna do is right after we get the person from our text fields, um, we're going to want to actually store that in local storage. So to do that, we first need to encode the data. So to do that, we need to create an instance of the property list encoder. So let's go ahead and start by saying let encoder equal property list encoder. And then we're gonna to wanna to unwrap the uh, encoded person that we're trying to create because it's gonna be optional. So we're gonna say if let encoded person equal encoder dot encode, and then we are going to pass in the value of self dot person. And if we get back that value, which actually I just realized, um, encoder.encode could fail. There could be an error that was returned. So we need to add a try statement right here. And we're gonna put this little question mark to indicate that if it can't for whatever reason encode this person and there is some type of error while it's encoding, just go ahead and return nil. And in this particular case, obviously this won't unwrap if it returns nil. So this is just a really swifty, clean way of doing that. So we're just gonna say try to do this, if not return nil. So if we get that encoded person, then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna say, wanna say user defaults dot standard dot set, and we're gonna come down to this value one right here. We're gonna say we're gonna wanna set the value of encoded person for key person. Now, whenever we actually get this person back and set it, it's going to encode that person and then set it within local storage. And that's literally all we have to do. At this point, it's done and it's in local storage. That was it, super easy. Now what we need to do is whenever the application loads, we need to try to get that user from local storage. And once we do, we're going to have to decode it and then turn it into something that Swift can understand. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what we're gonna wanna do is create a function and this is going to be get person from local storage. That's a long function name. And we're gonna wanna call this function from view did load. So let's actually call that above these so we can get the person from local storage and then we can update the UI and the text fields. So we could say get person from local storage. Now inside that function, similar to the way we did this, we're gonna need to create a decoder. So let's say let decoder equal property list decoder and we're going to want to initialize that class so now we need to do two things we need to get the object from local storage and then we need to decode it into the thing that we want to use so to do that we're going to say if let stored object equal user defaults dot standard dot get or sorry dot object for key person and we're going to want to cast that to a data object just like that um, then once we have that, actually let's go ahead and return these to a new line like we did before. So we're gonna wanna say if let stored object equal user defaults dot standard dot object for key person, and we're gonna, we're gonna cast that as data. And then we're gonna wanna say, then if let person equal decoder dot decode, 
and we're gonna we're gonna use this first one here and we gotta tell it the type that we're trying to decode to and this type needs to be a codable or decodable struct which we created a codable one so let's go ahead and pass in the name of that struct which is person whoops no person struct and we're gonna say dot self to tell it that this is the type that we're trying to decode to and we're going to decode that from the whoops, stored object property that we just created. And if we can do that, then we're gonna try to unwrap these two things. Now, this is another example of one that we need to add a try statement to because it could fail, but we'll just put that try question mark. And if it's nil, then we're not gonna use it. So now that we've unwrapped the stored object and then we unwrapped the person object, now that we have access to that person object, we can just say self.person equals person. And to make this a little bit easier to understand, let's say, let's call this decoded person. And then we're gonna say self.person equals decoded person. There we go. So once we decode the person, we're gonna set our person property on this view controller equal to the person that we just decoded. So that was a lot to take in. Let's go ahead and go over this one more time and make sure that it just really sinks in because I threw a lot of like code at you there, but it's actually really simple when it's all said and done. So. Once we click the submit button and once we check all these properties, we're going to create a new instance of that person. Then we need to create an encoder and then we need to try to encode that person. So we're going to say try to encode this person property that we just created. And if that's successful, then all we want to do is we want to set it in local storage. We want to set that encoded person for a key of person. Now, when we're ready to get the person from local storage, we need to create a decoder. We need to then get the stored object from user defaults. But again, this is a data property. It's not yet in the form of Swift. So we need to actually try to decode it into Swift by saying let decoded person equal. And then we're gonna try to decode into the person type from that stored object that we just got from local storage. And if all of that is successful, then we're gonna set our person property on the view controller equal to that decoded person. Now, if we go ahead and run this project, everything should start to work properly. So if I say Cole, and I put the age as 23, and I click submit, well now I can go ahead and close out of this application completely and if I come back, everything should be saved in its place, which obviously it is right here. So we've got coal 23, everything was saved. And again, if we weren't to have stored this in local storage, we wouldn't be able to do this. If we kill it in the task manager, we're getting rid of all of the, that data that was previously stored on the view controller. And if you don't believe me, you could try it yourself. Sometimes I show this to new developers and they're like, well, that just seems like it just worked, but it's not magic. Actually, what we did in local storage allows us to do that. So this is where things get really cool for you. I would really encourage you, go ahead and add a couple more properties, maybe add an occupation property or something like that. Make sure that you're able to store that in local storage properly. Um, and this just opens up all sorts of avenues for you. Now that you know this little trick on encoding and decoding data, this is going to apply to more than just local storage. This is also going to apply to the API modules that we're about to work on. We are also going to have to encode and decode data from that data. So that's gonna be important. But above all, the local storage thing is just a really fundamental part of iOS development. And now you have it in your wheelhouse. You can take this code that we've created and you can create all sorts of your own applications with it. And local storage is really, really important, obviously. If you have an application like Facebook or something, when the user logs, or, or sorry, when they close the app and come back to it later, you don't want them to have to log in every single time. The only way that it can remember your login information and keep you logged in is through local storage. So you're gonna need something like this to be able to do that. So we'll build on top of this in future modules, but this is just a really good starting place for using basic local storage, using user defaults. Really, congratulations on making it this far into the course. I, I know I say this pretty often, but um, it's just pretty cool to have made it this far. You've just got a ton of options available to you for creating applications now. So uh, again, in the future modules, we're going to be working with APIs, which are equally as exciting. And then we are also going to combine the two at some point and create just a full application with login, APIs, local storage, so on and so forth. Um, but one step at a time. So again, congrats on getting this this far and I will see you in the next module.